At the end of the last video, we were just making sure that our artwork would go, anything that goes right to the edge, which the edge is this line here. You can see it there. You can see it across here. Of course, it gets lost in the black, but it's there. It comes back around. You can see it right there. Anything that goes to that edge should go over the edge because now we are about to start the process of exporting. And one of the key things is we're telling it to export the artboard, which means we're only going to get what's inside of the artboard. So it helps to know what artboard you want to export. You could export all of them if you have multiple artboards, but you just end up with a lot of extra files on your computer. So the way that you know what artboard you're after is whatever's the last artboard that you worked on is going to show up right here. So let me give you an example here. If I click over here, you can see this changes to artboard one, but if I have something select over in this artboard, tells me that it's artboard two. So artboard two is obviously the one that we did all the work on and that we're after. Next step is just simply file export. Now they've added some stuff in here recently. Export for screens is pretty easy to use and if you were only interested in doing stuff for the web or emailing to people that would be fine but if you want complete control over it, as I'm going to explain, we're going to do export as. So it's file, export, export as. Now we'll go ahead and fill everything in from the top down, but just so I get to say it twice, because this is the number one misstep in here, is forgetting to check use artboards. If you get unusual results, like you're, you end up with a lot of extra stuff, bigger, white space or whatever doesn't look like what your artboard looked like it's because you forgot to check this okay so now what we want to do is name it to turn in so that would be your last name underscore first name underscore and then a description of the the project and i'll just pretend this is called poster project and then the format after the name will automatically uh, appear. The extension will appear for the format. So in this case, J JPEG. And that's what we want for the class. But just so you know, here's all the other stuff that you can do in here. So if you need to make a TIFF in the future or an SVG for a website or something, you can see all the possibilities. Um, we want to, since this is another file that you'll be turning into me is we want to navigate to that folder turn into Steve that we made so here it is uh, and it's on the desktop and again remember if you see two too few options in here just click this little downward carrot then navigate over here to the desktop and then once on the desktop find your your folder so I'll double click on that so it's now pointing into this folder um, I've got the correct file format selected. Make sure that use artboards is selected. I was careful, careful earlier to see which artboard I was using. So I do want to fill that artboard number in there. And then I click on export. Once I click on export, it's going to take me into another contextual menu for whatever format I chose. So we'll see the options for saving a JPEG next. And here we go. A little advertisement for the new feature they just added, uh, but we're content with this one. So color mode, instead of cyan, magenta, yellow, black, we want red, green, blue for the internet. We want our quality slider all the way to the right. We want our compression method to be baseline standard. We want our resolution, in this case, to be 72 pixels per inch, but notice you have other presets of 150 and 300. Also, you could click on other and type in any number you wanted there. Anti-aliasing, 99% of the time you want type optimized because it's a graphic design project and it's going to have type. But if it was strictly just an art project, you could select art optimized. Then because it is RGB for the web, we want to go ahead and embed the standard RGB profile because that is what is used or works best on the web. That's all the choices here. As soon as we click OK, it's going to go ahead 
and build this file in the folder that we selected in the last contextual menu. So I click OK. It actually happens very quickly now. And so back to our checklist. We've done all of these steps here. And now the next step, and this is the important one, is let's test this thing. Don't assume that it worked out correctly. So we want to go find that file that we just created and open it in Photoshop. And notice we do not want to save or alter it in Photoshop. We just really want to look at it and make sure that everything came out all right. Okay, so here we are at the folder that we have ready to turn in to me with our Illustrator file and now our JPEG. It adds an O2 extension in there. If, if you want to fix that, make it look nice and clean like the other one, you can. Uh, just click on the file, hit the return key, and then position your mouse where you want to get rid of things and then delete, 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 and then just click away. Okay, so now we want to open this file in Photoshop. We can do that by clicking uh, or right clicking and selecting open with and finding Photoshop there or one of my favorite methods is in a, on a Mac is just simply take this file, drag it to the Photoshop icon at the bottom of the screen and that will force Photoshop not only to open but to open with that file. And then the first thing we want to do once we've opened up the file in Photoshop is run through um, a F key test. And that's just literally pressing the F key and taking a look at our work and making sure there are no issues. So that looks just like this. Here I am in Photoshop. I'm going to click on the F key one time. Let me make sure I'm actually alive and awake in Photoshop here. And then you can see that the background changes to a darker color. Hit it again goes to a black background, hit it again, comes back. So what I'm looking for as I get to sample it against these different colored backgrounds is I'm making sure that there is no little sliver of white that shows up. Now this is not a sliver of white. This is actually, it's almost like a inverted drop shadow. But let me just show you a, a bad example. In fact, I'll, we'll just make it together here. I'll show you how it could happen. This is typically what happens is somebody is just not really thinking and they're trying to get their work in here just so it's in here perfect, you know, exact size. But, you know, if we were to zoom in really close, we'd realize that it's actually just, you know, a little bit shy of being a perfect size. We can't really see it here in Illustrator. Or we're just not careful enough to zoom in or you know take the precaution of, of making the full bleed and then we go through the steps of exporting the image and so if we open that image up in Photoshop we might not even notice here because of that weird kind of drop shadow thing but when we cycle through with the F key oop, there it is sticking out like a sore thumb and then mega sore thumb there so we would know we need to go back we never make any changes on these in Photoshop. The whole idea is that we don't want to alter any pixels. We want a nice, clean export. Uh, so we'd go back to Illustrator and redo this. The other things that you might notice here is it'd be real obvious if we started picking up you know, other items from the artboard. That would mean we didn't check the box, use artboard. Uh, another thing would be when we get to this mode that our blacks in here aren't as dark and rich looking as these blacks. That might indicate that we left it at CMYK rather than changing it to RGB. And then the last step that we do in Photoshop is go to image, image size, and verify that the size is what we are expecting. I would suggest if, if that doesn't make sense to you, at all. Uh, where did you go? Um, you know, if you have any troubles with the side, just kind of use this as a checklist that the image should either be 800 pixels wide or 600 pixels tall. Now, notice within one pixel because sometimes we may even see it here that um, Illustrator will add one pixel, so we might see that it's 801 or, or 601. That's completely okay. If not, if you don't have that, you, you can't you're done. Go back to Illustrator, try again, follow the steps a little bit closer. If the image is 800 pixels wide, 
then it should be 600 or less pixels tall. If it's taller than 600 pixels, go back to Illustrator. You did something wrong. If the image is 600 pixels tall, it should be 800 or less pixels wide. Again, we're not trying to make an image that is exactly 800 by 600. We're just trying to meet one of these. If we meet both of them, it's a, it's a coincidence. Um, also, don't make the mistake of thinking that because 800 by 600 is okay, that 600 by 800 would be okay. It can't be taller than 600. So 600 by 800 does not work. And then look to see that in our case here that the image resolution is 72 ppi. So let's go take a look at that. Okay. So back here in Photoshop, let's get back to the proper image, the one that looks good, and we go image, image size. And we can see right here that our dimensions are 800 pixels wide by 520, which is indeed less than 600, so this one works. Uh, the resolution is 72, so we're good. If we're not 100% sure, we go back to this little checklist make sure that everything's okay. A couple things to keep in mind, do not print from this bitmap image that you just made. If you needed a print of your original artwork, go back to Illustrator. Much better quality print. You just change this to a low resolution image, 72 ppi. If you print that, it's going to look bad. It's going to look pixelated. So you got to keep always in mind why you're doing the things that you're doing. You know, one's for putting on the internet, the other one's for printing. Also, sometimes if you enter a design contest, especially the one that's going to be in a magazine or a book, the results, they'll probably not want your Illustrator files. So they'll have you do a process just like what we just did, but most likely they'll, they'll say make it a TIFF, make it 300 pixels per inch, and they'll give you a minimum or a maximum size to do it, but in that case you would not change it to RGB and it's okay for them to print from that file because you did it at a much higher resolution. And when we finish checking it in Photoshop, if all's a go, we just simply cancel out, close out, we're not saving anything. We now have this folder that we're gonna put on our thumb drive, not that folder, this folder. And these are the two folders that you would drag into my folder. Do not give me your folder. You would just simply take these two. There would be a folder on my desktop, you know, pro appropriately named. And you're going to find that folder. Take yours, drag them on there, and you're done.